Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Gravity Falls, Season 2, Episodes 6 through 10. Wow, this season is where I remember all the episodes I wanted Ember to watch is. <laughs> Things are getting just a tiny bit intense. First episode, somewhat calm. From there, it just escalates. Mm-hmm. So, shall we do it chronologically? I try. <laughs> so the short stories were a nice intro and nice framework for it. Car breaks down, middle of nowhere, mystery shack. Mm-hmm. And I like the question you asked after the end. So, was that part with Stan real? Because all the stories can easily fit, but... Did Stan really lock someone up? And I'm like, maybe? Yeah, after that point we were trying to pay attention to any shots of the Mystery Shack to see if we could actually see a cheapskate on display. Because, I mean, even the story with Waddles could have reasonably happened. Though Stan did say, uh, the story that I'm making up right now. Which means that that one probably wasn't actually canon. Yeah, except for the fact that we know when Stan makes up stories, they're horrible. That was when he was pretending not to know anything about the Mysteries of Gravity Falls. Hmm, that's a good point. And we know from the intro of seeing him around the campfire that he can tell good stories if he wants to. So yeah, I liked when they did it in Season 1 also. A way to frame creepy stories that aren't long enough for a full episode. Mm -hmm. And it's not a clips episode, which is how they would normally do a thing like that. Yeah, instead we get actual small vignettes. And just really impressed with the animation for the claymation one. I mean, the mm -hmm. differentiation between the animation and the claymation, however they did it, I vote black magic. Just like the guy in the episode. Are you crazy? It would take way too long to do this. I just use black magic. Yeah, nobody actually moves this stuff frame by frame. I'm not a masochist. <laughs> oh, and yet I love how animators made fun of themselves in this episode. Mm-hmm. Oh. And writers, too, because, you know, it was more the writers who wrote the episode. The animators just drew it, just as if that's a small thing. It's not a radio play. The animation is awesome! Mm-hmm. Very well done. Disney is always known for their animation. Except when they do something horrible. Yeah, or, or they're trying to farm something out. Yeah. But the nice thing is, thanks to Pixar, they've developed some technology that makes hand-drawn animation a whole lot easier to do, specifically the in-betweening. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure no one really likes doing in-betweening. Mm-hmm. Because you have the keyframe animators who animate the poses and um, the big motions. Then you have the people who have to sit there and draw every single frame between. Nowadays, thanks to computers, we can get rid of a lot of that. We just have to do hand tweaking of the in-betweening after that point. Which means that the artists can spend more time on doing truly creative things and not doing drudge work. Mm-hmm. And then you have shows that are completely done on the computer like My Little Pony and South Park. I admire their willingness to push the barrier, but I've never made it through more than five minutes. Yeah, I'm like, that, that thing's made inside of a computer? I believe five Macs hooked together. At least it used to be. Wow, I didn't know you had actually known that, because I don't. I always heard the joke that, yeah, South Park's rendered on supercomputers. <laughs> I don't know if it's true, it was just something I heard in college, because, you know, when I was in college, I was with college-age people who would enjoy that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Which is also where I heard about how it was being rendered on supercomputers, I'm like, that seems like such a waste. Oh, you mean like Watson doing taxes with H&R Block? <laughs> nice thing is, while Watson does taxes, he can also do a billion other things. <laughs> Alright, so back to Gravity Falls. Obviously, we liked the claymation episode, and uh, those creepy at the end of that vignette that Seuss was basically Gumby. Mm-hmm. Though, nitpick, I would like to know, why did the Black Magic animated claymation creatures want to turn them into more claymation creatures? And if they wanted that, why was the filmmaker still human? Yeah, based on what everyone else said, he's been aloof or uh, reclused for a while. Yes, and from what he said, he's been their prisoner and 
now they're going to turn, you know, our intrepid crew into claymation figures. If that's what they wanted, why didn't they do it to him? I also love the nice fact that they switch back to standard animation for shadows and stuff like that and go, Ooh, this seems really neat. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, people would go insane having to animate this. Yeah, it's really expensive. <laughs> yeah, and they're all facing towards it. We can't see anything they're like, wow, this is amazing. Ah, <laughs> uh, good use. Because I bet you the clay animation was really expensive to do. Yeah. Uh, oh my god, it's grabbing for us slowly! <laughs> Let's move away! Oh no, it got me! <laughs> <laughs> yes, and why would Mabel be afraid of claymation? Clay is a malleable substance. Look what she did with the wax figures. And the wax itself, and yes, it was a childhood trauma. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe it was a childhood trauma. Maybe the childhood trauma was something else other than just being scared by claymation. Probably something more, but we're probably not going to find out about it because that was a vignette episode. And oh my goodness, the hand witch. <laughs> Could we say hand witch a few more times in that vignette? <laughs> kind of like sandwich. <laughs> I, I believe that was part of the joke. Mm-hmm. I love the joke near the end where... They made fun of those makeover shows. Yeah, that whole thing was basically taken from Extreme Home Makeovers. Mm-hmm. Oh, and the book of pickup lines were for guys trying to get girls. Yes, also incredibly dated. But apparently they work. Apparently. And, I'm sorry, if you're going to take the time to make over the cave, Mabel, we already know you like to do personal makeovers. While you were at it, why not fix her hair or update her wardrobe or something? And, you know, that was really kind of cruel for you, of you to say, Mabel. Men will tolerate you now. <laughs> Ouch. Mabel, I thought you were the nice one. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> also, I would have expected better hands out of her handicraft. Yeah. There were a lot of hands in that cave. I'm trying to figure out if she actually got them from other guys or... What? She says, I take hand from guys just to get them up here. Yeah, and apparently you do give them back because Stan got his back. <laughs> kids, don't watch. And then the camera zooms in. It's okay, kids, don't look. Camera zooms in. Come on! <laughs> it's not fair. Uh, on the lips! No! No! <laughs> I don't need my hands that badly. No, wait! <laughs> yeah, because where did she get all the hands? Has she been out there that long looking that she's kept them? Or are they from ex-lovers? Are they from graves? Yeah. Also, I do like how characters are retaining things. Like, Dipper's trying to learn, don't mess with things. Yeah, it's like, you really shouldn't do that. And Wet blanket! We've got a wet blanket, blanket here. here! Oh, I can't compete in this market! Yeah... On a hot day, you might be actually able to sell wet blankets. Or at least somewhat damp. Yes. Because I know on hot days, I used to do a trick where I would just take a towel and put it in the freezer, and then take it out and wear that. I had an older friend who told me about in their college days, she and her dorm mates would take the sheets and put them in the bathtub, and then throw them over their heads as they collapsed onto the beds. Wow. Yeah. That sounds like a very dangerous thing to do, because getting your mattress wet. Yes, but apparently it was very hot and, like, no AC, because, mm. you know, back in the day. Yeah. But yeah, don't mess with things. And, yeah, that whole thing with Waddles was entirely plausible, but that was the one that was kind of easiest to see where it was going. Because Waddles as a genius wouldn't hang out with Mabel. But the fungus only increased your intelligence. It didn't remove your emotion. So of course he makes the emotion choice to stay with Mabel and to be happy. Yep, and I noticed something through this second watching of this episode that I didn't notice the first time because I didn't know about this particular person. Yes, I'm a geek and I didn't know about Neil deGrasse Tyson, the voice actor for Waddles. Very famous science guy. He even had his own program and he, apparently he was introduced to science by the um oh, 
what's his name? He goes, a billion, billion stars, billion galaxies. He had his own program for a while. I can't remember. Oh, there goes my geek cred. It's all right. Uh, but we should probably move forward because that was the lighthearted episode. Mm. And now the Blind Eye Society. You know, when those guys first showed up, just two of them, to take Lazy Susan, I thought it was the agents. Mm. Because they said they were going to have to escalate. And mm. I'm like, hmm, is that the escalated group? Apparently not. No, but it explains so much. It brings up so many more questions. Yes, why the townsfolk are so gullible. Why no one ever seems to remember any of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And why McGucket is crazy. Been hit a few many times with the memory ray. Yeah. I think I'm finding out about some side effects. <laughs> I'm not sure about this. And, you know, examples of how having power goes too far. Because the initial concept was, we will take away traumatic memories that people don't want to remember. Fast forward, now we will take away memories of anything odd, with or without your consent. Because the removal of traumatic, debilitating memories can be positive. Yeah, with the person's permission, and it looks like they're archived, so if you do want them back, you just have to watch your video. But that brings up some questions about the video that old man McGucket made of himself. If these are videos of his removed memories, why are they in third person? Because you, if you think about it, if, if those are his memories, unless he was looking at a monitor at the time when he was filming it. Well, I, it seems like they're filming it because if you look at the other videos that we saw and how they took Susan's memories, the video, you know, the memory is from the third person of them being questioned about what they wanted to forget. Air quotes on wanted. It was, yeah. what did you see? So is the gun also filming them? Good question. But in McGucket's memories, we see the gun, which means that he is talking to something that is not the gun. Yeah, but the way they look at it, they take something out of the gun when they, like, this is this person's memories. Yes, but it doesn't seem to be the actual memory. It's the memory of them taking the memory. Mm -hmm. Because when we look at Robbie's, it's not the memory of him getting his butt handed to him by a video game character. It's him being questioned about it. Mm -hmm. Which brings up a secondary point. Robbie's confession of what he saw when he was prompted to tell the truth included that he was saved by a 12-year-old boy. Why did the society not turn around and go looking for this 12-year-old boy? How have Mabel Dipper, more importantly, because he's been there much longer, Stan, all avoid falling prey to the blind eye? And probably Zeus, too, because he doesn't seem to be affected at all. He's so chill that he probably doesn't come up on the blind eye's radar because he's so calm yeah he probably doesn't even react to the strange things he sees he's just oh that's normal and moves on um we've pretty much seen that go back to the dinosaur episode mm, or the candy episode is this strange um mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i can see seuss because he's so chill but how did stan escape their notice all these years probably because he's so good at lying every time they'd come up to him he was like he was like what what i didn't see anything Nice robes. You guys should come to my shop sometime. Seriously, I'll put that on display. I'll sell a dozen. I'll, I'll cut you in, 5%. <laughs> Probably something like that. Or he knows how to avoid them. Yeah, but, you know, Wendy's seen stuff now because she's tagged along. Mm. So how is the Pines family and entourage stayed away from the blind eye all this time? Yeah, maybe it has something to do with the fact that they're connected to the mystery shack in some way. Probably also has to do with the fact that the Mystery Shack is not directly in town. Hmm. So not observable as easily as what the Blind Eye Society members see while they're in town for their day jobs. Mm -hmm. They only come out to the Mystery Shack to see the mysteries, which they all think are fake, and what Stan puts on display is fake. Mm -hmm. So that would divert suspicion. Yay, good job, Dipper, taking down an evil secret society. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, Mabel is just too much fun. 
you are now this, and you do this. Yes, I give you a weird name and tell you you are a traveling banjo singer. Yes, I am. <laughs> Although I was like, oops, I think we did a little too much on him. Yeah, just maybe. Because apparently most of that poor guy's life was the secret society, so erasing that from his memory kind of left him with nothing. Well, if you notice, he was the one that he said, but you've never seen me before. Which means, because look at the other episodes. We have seen the townsfolk. We have not seen him. Mm -hmm. So either he is out of sight the entire time or he has a really good disguise. Maybe it's one of those things we have to, we have to go back and rewatch for the backgrounds again. <laughs> Possibly. Why is there so much in the background? Yeah, and wow, I knew McGucket was important because he was a genius. I never figured him for the author, but I also never figured him for being connected with the author because his stuff was all more sciency. He built all these different robots. The first time we see him with his lake monster robot and they go back over the story, he's built multiple robots over the years. Mm -hmm. So even when he was the crazy nut and not the bright young scientist that we see in the memory flashbacks, he was still doing that. So all my links to him were science, where to me, all the links to the author, even though Stan has a machine going, in my mind, all the links to the author were more supernatural. Mm. So why would a scientist know anything about that stuff? Mm -hmm. But apparently there is some overlap between supernatural and science because the author needed bright young scientists like McGucket. Mm-hmm. And apparently something horrible happened to McGucket. Yes, that he just wanted to unsee, and he had the ability. Yeah, but he should have tested the device first. In a safer manner. Yeah. In a much safer manner. Yep. I don't see just how watching that could... I could see how it could maybe trigger some of the memories, depending on how the memory erasing device worked. And of course, the fun, you know, side vignettes of... Well, I want to forget all my summer romances. Oh, come on, Mabel, you don't want to do that. Isn't there something you want to forget? Like a certain song? <laughs> Earwigs. We all love and hate them at the same time. Mostly hate, especially if it's a song you don't like in the first place. But really, Seuss, eating your own pants. <laughs> Wish I could unsee that. Is, is Seuss eating his own pants? Hmm. <laughs> and then... The return of the time traveler. Mm-hmm. Gladiator battles. Can't pronounce the name of the thing because I've forgotten it, but hey. Yeah. Wow, that's like a get out of jail free card. You can invoke the right to take the accused from any time period and potentially screw up the timeline even more. Also the time wishes? Yeah. You get one rule free wish. The only thing you cannot wish for is a better tasting muffin. <laughs> okay, was that in there? Because I missed it if it was. No, no, that's very odd parents. Ah. Oh, I remember that episode. I actually remember that episode. Not entirely, but I remember the specific part when they were talking about the muffin. Yes. You eat the muffin, you get a rule free wish. You touch the time thing, you get a time paradox free wish. And wow. Everything they go through, and the final task is laser tag. Mm hmm. I love how the brush just. Bzz, bzz, bzz. <laughs> yeah, because hmm, fog machines hadn't kicked on yet. You're not even trying to hide behind anything, you're just talking, and they're twins. Trust me, they know how to work together. Yeah. It also reminds me of the one time I played laser tag. First time ever, actually. Really? Yep. Wow. Yeah, that place was really fun, and it, it was good because it was a group of people we knew that we were playing with. Well, I should actually rephrase. The first time I played in a professional arena, there was probably times when I was younger when I played with the actual stuff you can buy in stores. Yeah, but that stuff's not yeah. nearly as... So, yeah. So now back to the episodes. Mm-hmm. And just, wow. Zeus hates his birthday because it reminds him of when he realized his father was a deadbeat jerk. Mm hmm There's a lot of heavy stuff going on in these kids' shows nowadays, and it's awesome. Yes, because we see, you know, he has that one postcard, and that's what we see in the present. 
But in the past, we see there's a whole box of postcards. Every year, he did that to Seuss. Mm -hmm. I agree with Dipper and Mabel. It looked like a pretty awesome birthday party. It's like cake, friends. Mm -hmm. And I think they actually read off his entire, the entire date on his driver's license. So we can actually figure out how old Seuss actually is. Yeah, we just have to take that date and then go back to when the episode actually aired so that we get the correct year since we're watching it um, post-airing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. <laughs> you know, and Dipper and Mabel just tried so hard. And it's also funny that, paradox, Zeus showed Mabel how to get to the candy machine and then Mabel shows young Zeus. Mm -hmm. Which is just one of those things like, how does that even work? How, when does it, how does it start? Yeah, it's like, it just doesn't make sense. And then I also love that even though Seuss did that, he still was putting money in after the fact so that it wasn't stealing. He's like, okay, I took this much, I'm putting money in. Because mm -hmm, Seuss is such a nice guy. Also, he really apparently would do anything. And there's a good reason, because if you think about it, Seuss sees Grunkle Stan as a parent figure. Yeah, because we see by the end of the episode that on that horrible day, he goes to the mystery shack and finds meaning in his life. <laughs> says, here, you're hired. Can you fix this? Yeah, go for it. One size fits all. Yeah, I also love how we never see Stan's face. If you pay attention, they never show what Stan looks like at that, in that time period. Yeah, they didn't have to draw 10 years ago Stan. We got 10 years ago Robbie. We got 10 years ago Zeus. 10 years ago Avalita, Wendy, Tamri. <laughs> I love that my friend thinks you're cute, Tamri. <laughs> <laughs> this just feels odd. I'm you're like too young. You can see it from her point of view now, can't you? <gasps> yeah, I think that probably helped Dipper get over his crush more than anything, more than the shape shifting episode of. Oh, this is awkward. I need to stop making her life awkward. Mm -hmm. I also like. Um, That's gonna go nowhere, Toby. Oh shoot. <laughs> Yeah, what happened to not messing with the past, Mabel? Though, nice tie back that he still kept the clothes all those years later. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, did you see the poster of Baby... Uh, what's his name? Evil Dude. Had a crush on Mabel. Still has a crush on Mabel. Gideon? Yeah, did you catch the poster of Baby Gideon? Nope, that I missed. Yeah, there was this poster that had graffiti on it with his father and Baby Gideon in it. Oh, I noticed graffiti on the poster, but I didn't take in what the poster was of. Yeah, it had his father and Baby Gideon. I didn't read the text. All I saw was graffiti and those two. Oh, uh, well, but yeah, time travel's a great way to give us flashbacks without actually having to sit through flashbacks because they're interactive. And how when Mabel and Dipper hear what they can get, that they, you know, turn themselves in to win the gladiator trial. And they just keep showing that overall, they're nice kids. Mm -hmm. The guy was going to wish them out of existence, and they wished to fix his life. I, I shouldn't say wish. He was going to use, well, it sounded like he was going to use the time wish to erase them from history, which it doesn't seem fair because you get the time wish and you get to decide the loser's fate. Well, he, maybe he would use the wish for something else because his first thing is to get rid of them from history because that's basically a wish on its own. Yeah. And if they were erased from history, he would have never lost his job. Because mm. there wouldn't have been the excessive time paradoxes, because they wouldn't have been there to steal the time travel device. Also interesting that apparently that red Mystery Shack screwdriver is the key to fixing time travel devices, because it's the same screwdriver in both episodes. Mm. That's the one that blends and steals. That's the one that Dipper steals from the shack to fix theirs, and that's the one it gets Seuss to go to the mystery shack. Wow. Good job on picking up on things. I would high five you, but I'm over here with a recording device. In yes. both hands. I always do backups, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, back up your files, or it's like they're no longer there. Trust me, I'm an artist. I've lost files thanks to that. Damn you, hard drives. Damn you, da. Keeping my mouth shut. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there was just a lot of good stuff in that episode. And it was so sweet what Seuss wished. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, he didn't need to see his father, but he could have wished for anything. And he wished to make them well. Mm -hmm. And have an everlasting pizza. Yes. 
because, dude, you just wasted a time, which, oh, no, I also got this infinite pizza, but it'll keep doing that for, like, ever. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was a good wish. Because even Dipper and Mabel were like, dude, it, dude. <laughs> yeah, and then the pizza solves everything. Yeah, well, I mean, it's really touching, though. Mm-hmm. Just incredibly touching. Yeah, Zeus has such a kind heart. He, like, shows it in all the episodes. He may be an idiot in a lot of ways, but he's also really smart. And he also has a lot of heart. Yeah, just incredibly kind. And goofy and okay with being goofy. And it looks like his long-distance relationship with Melody's going well. Mm -hmm. See, I'm the matchmaker. With duct tape, Mabel. With duct tape. <laughs> that, that doesn't work. And also, Zeus and Melody kind of got together on their own. You really didn't have much to do with it. Yeah, it was more the fact that he got all that practice with Tiffany. And so he wasn't thinking, oh my god, it's a girl. Mm -hmm. He's just thinking, oh, a person to talk to, which is how you're supposed to think about people. I'm looking at you, every user of a pickup line ever. <laughs> you have a nice butt. <laughs> which is basically what that pickup line meant. Yes. It's like, oh, are those space pants? Because your butt is out of this world. <laughs> Why, thank you. I was waiting for someone to notice. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, so since we're on the matchmaking, I, I think we're on to the love god and Woodstick, as opposed to Woodstock. Apparently. Also, I eat children! <laughs> oh my goodness, that was funny. It's punishing us for our horrible choices! Like, wow, you know that you're making bad choices. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially if a lot of them are teenagers. They, they don't really have an excuse, per se, though it could be used as an excuse. We've mentioned this before, but based on studies I can remember, and I don't know if they've been proven wrong or not recently, but apparently teenagers' brains are half off for construction reasons. Yeah, so apparently if you can survive your teenage years, you come out on the other side with a fully formed brain. But if you don't, oh well. Yeah, I guess you weren't good for the gene pool anyways. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, that was just so rough. I mean, Dipper's like, yay, we're finally cool with all of Wendy's friends. And then Mabel has to go play matchmaker. Which surprisingly turned out well. Well, the two of them are actually rather well suited to each other. But it wasn't fair for Mabel to use the potion. If there was a way that she could have nullified the potion without the anti-love. Because... She basically forced them to fall in love. Yeah, and I think they actually probably were already interested in each other, but both had those list of reasons not to do this. And those list of reasons become kind of a solid thing in your head that you can't get rid of without a heavy push past them. And so Mabel gave them a little magic push. And then Thompson brought the group back together. Mm -hmm. All according to his plan. I'm like... Wow, I know people are desperate for friends, but you really want to let... Also, Thompson apparently is a real genius if he planned a lot of that. Yeah, well, let's see. He had the cake, which sounds like it should have been the plan. Then he drops the cake. Then he gets caught with all the snacks. Then he runs. Then he becomes a human pinata. Yes, at the end he says according to plan. Which means he planned out most of that. And I mean, you know that he is more than he seems when he's having it out with Mabel and Dipper about, I let these guys do all this stuff to me in order to keep the group cohesive. Also, they even takes it from Dipper because Dipper gets the compliment of, hey, good use of Thompson. <laughs> Which is awesome. Yeah, but kids, don't let people treat you like that. Please don't. Listen to adults, I think. Am I an adult? Chronologically. <sighs> I knew it. I need to fix that. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> but yeah, but that was interesting. Actual love god. And he's like, oh yeah, the internet does most of my work for me now. Yeah, random matchups that aren't necessarily a good idea. Yeah, the internet does do that. Swipe. Swipe. Ooh. Swipe. Ooh. I'll keep that one. Swipe the other direction. Mm -hmm. I actually can't remember how Tinder actually works. I just know it's swipe one direction for nope, swipe the other direction for yep. Yeah, so that was interesting. And, you know, Stan trying 
to get in with the young crowd. Zeus is right. It's like he never turns down an opportunity to make money. Okay, Pioneer Day, yes, because he didn't want to be there. So he was there accidentally. And then Woodstick, he's like, no, shut it down. And his realization at the end of like, nah, being feared is better. Like, yeah, yeah, I know the saying is better to be feared than loved if thou must choose. Doesn't necessarily, you know what, it's Stan. Yeah. I'm just going to leave it at that. He's Stan. And yeah, overpriced tickets. Go to the concert. Even if you don't go together, it doesn't look like it's the kind of concert where you have assigned seating. Just go separately, my goodness. Don't waste a perfectly good ticket. Especially when they're that expensive. Yes. Especially when your friend bought them with his money and sold his watch to get them for you. And we've seen that watch in other episodes. It's not even from the hand witch. So we're not talking mob boss quality here. We're talking even better if it could be hawked for enough to buy those tickets. Mm -hmm. uh, and a quick thing back to the hand witch. I'm pretty sure Stan actually did pay for that watch. Because I don't think he grabbed the money again. I think he actually just took the watch. I think he did too, but they never agreed on a price. So depending on how much money was left and what which would have actually sold the watch for if she'd agreed to sell it, mm -hmm. he could have still shorted her. He also could have overpaid her. We don't know. We just know that he, she did not agree to the deal. Mm -hmm. Now back to the episode we were on. Mm -hmm. And yeah, those two do kind of work for each other, going back to Robbie. Mm -hmm. And wow, his parents... So cheerful and funeral home directors and Robbie so dark and goth. Oh my goodness. Did you see his portraits? Yeah. Portraits? How they changed over time. Mm -hmm. Apparently it was his early teenage years. Because <laughs> if you look at it, it's like cheery, cheery, and slightly not so cheery. And then puberty hit. I think hormones did bad things to Robbie. Well, you know, it's always awkward when you're a kid and your parents work in any part of the uh, funeral industry. I had a friend in high school. Especially when there is that cheery. Mm-hmm. Hi, we're going to bury your parents now. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> yeah. And apparently they said someone would look lovely in that rainbow sweater. Yes. Mabel was wearing. Yes, someone's remains specifically. Mm-hmm. They just... Had him laying around or, well, or was that who was supposed to be buried in the open grave? Because normally a cemetery doesn't just have an open grave like that. Mm -hmm. You only dig when you're about to put a coffin in or if you have to exhume someone for a reason. Mm -hmm. I, I hope they were going to put a coffin in because exhuming and him laying in there. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. But there wasn't anything written on the stone yet, so. It may have been the guy that they... I think it was cheesing cracker splatter off of. Yeah, yeah, it could have been. Yeah, it, it was at least crackers. I'm not sure if it had cheese. It should have, but, you know, Mabel turned it down because she didn't want cracker mouth while she was consoling Robbie. But you would think she wouldn't have that high of an opinion of her matchmaking ability considering all her failed summer romances. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe she thinks it's kind of like the cobbler and his kids. He's making shoes for everyone else, but none for his own kids. Yeah, yeah, could be. Could be. And for her to fall for those fake ones. I love how they were all hers. There were none for Dipper. Mm -hmm. That's why he was so easily able to punch away that one. Ha! You sure? Oh, dang it, Mabel! <laughs> like, I totally forgive all of you. Yes, you can all marry me. Well, why don't you just throw the gnomes in there while you're at it? You marry all 1,500 of them, however many it was. Don't make me shiver like that. <laughs> that was an internal shiver. You did not see it, but it was an internal shiver. <laughs> Yeah, and then, oh my goodness, the party. Pacifica's family party. That was a good episode for evolution of character. Yes, because Pacifica has been trying, and here she really got that extra boost to take a huge step. Mm-hmm. The riffraff are everywhere! <laughs> <sighs> no, no, they're not. The only riffraff I see here is you. Yes, uh, might you recall everything that your family has done in the past to get to where you are now? Lie, cheat, and steal. Mm-hmm. And apparently be inadvertently responsible for many deaths. Mm-hmm. Because, boy, was that a gruesome way to go. Yeah. Mudslide plus axe. Yeah, not to mention in the time episode, someone was literally evaporated. Yeah. 
then when the skeleton came out of the fire and built itself up, I'm like, this is a kid's show, right? <laughs> right? Anybody? An anyone? Kid show, right? This is, they're nodding. It's a kid show. How do they get it past the censors? Of course, they have some weird stuff like, it's only an X-rated movie if it's gone, if this sex scene has gone this long, or if they use the F word more than twice. Um, that's very arbitrary. Yeah. Sh shouldn't the content of the scene matter as opposed to just the duration? Yeah, and I love how violence is perfectly fine over here in the rating system. Violence won't get you up on the R and X and... No, and no, it's just how many words you use or how long a particular sex scene. It's usually a lot of sex. Sex will get you an R rating like no one's business. Uh, so will an F-bomb. Yeah. The movie Stand By Me would probably be PG if it wasn't for the F-bomb. Mm-hmm. Back to the show we're talking about. Yeah. So... Yeah, Dipper got tricked into exercising a ghost, and then he got tricked into letting it go. Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. By the way, did you notice anything about Dipper? I'm trying to give you a hint to make a connection to a past episode in this episode. Uh, that he cleans up well? Hmm, <laughs> no. You even mentioned the episode I'm hinting at in this, this episode of ours. I've mentioned several past episodes. Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying not to give it out directly yeah because i'm like what his birthmark the black light the holy water the dressing nice what it's specifically what happens to him near the end of the episode i mentioned the shapeshifter for all of two seconds yeah i was trying not to be direct because it's very obvious once i really pointed out but though i didn't notice it until i was watching theories online and went Oh my god, he is stuck in the same position as the shapeshifter. Yes, he is. And if they hadn't had the previous interactions with Pacifica at Mini Golf, he probably would have been stuck like that forever. So the shapeshifter would have been... Correct. Mm-hmm. Though, according to McGucket's laptop, we still have another opportunity in 21 hours. Yeah, we're still F-bombed. Yeah, and just wow. And Pacifica's parents like, come on, come to the safe room. Yeah. Ring that bell one more time. I'll cram it down your throat. I really wish they would have explained more in this episode about why does the bell work? I know we're, we're probably using a reference to, I don't know why I want to say Schwarzenegger's cat, but that's not right. It's Pavlov's dog. Pavlov's dog, yeah. Yeah, a Pavlovian response. So training from early childhood to react to the bell mm -hmm. because that's much more civilized to discipline your child by ringing a bell than yelling at them. And his tally of who could survive in the panic room didn't sound right. I didn't hear him include the mother. I heard him say, you, me, and the butler. We'll eat the butler. I'm like, um, mother? Anywhere? I thought he said us at some point. I interpreted the us as him and Pacifica. Ah, I interpreted it as the whole family. Either way, and nice side story going on with Mabel, Candy, and Grinda getting into the party and breaking their pact. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the one that they're worried about having an overly strong style being the one to get the phone number. Mm-hmm. I don't have a phone! Write it on my forehead! <laughs> so are you going to get a phone in the meantime or borrow one of your friends? <laughs> yeah, did she mean phone overall or just cell phone? Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's still that whole thing of writing it on a piece of paper. But it's Grenda. Yes. It's like, well, now how are you going to get it? Because unless you can read it backwards in the mirror. Also, the international phone bills on that. Yeah, Austria. Dang it, I failed geography. Well, I didn't actually fail. I just never retained any of it. That's mm -hmm. why I rely so much on Google Maps. Though I'm very good at using a map, even if it's not Google Maps. I can orient myself very quickly using a map. Yeah, and I'm not good at that at all. I'm more by a landmark. It's like, I can't tell you what street I'm turning down. I can just tell you that it's by this location after driving past these other locations. Yeah. And if you hit this location, you've gone too far. Yeah, I have a very good sense of direction. Because I know almost always where I am, in a, especially in a space. That was redundant, but you get the idea. 
Like every time we go to a certain con and after she parks the car, she's like, okay, where is the door? It's over there. Are you sure? Yes. Mm -hmm. I like always know where it is. It's like, okay, because that's like my uh, key point. The moment we come in, you can actually see it as we first drive into the parking lot. So I zone in on that and like, yep, it's right there. And as we drive down all the sweet... Looking for a parking space that isn't a compact and that someone hasn't double parked in. Mm-hmm. Now back to the episode. Yeah, so interested to see how Pacifica's family dynamic changes now that she's taken charge in this very important occasion. Mm -hmm. Because her parents are probably going to ramp it back as much as they can. Because the curse has been broken by letting the townsfolk in. Therefore, they never have to do it again. Though I think the townsfolk would have something else to say about that. Probably. Now that they've been actually been let in, they're like, hmm. Yeah, it was just kind of sad to see how the townsfolk acted. I know you are better people than this because you don't act this way at the Mystery Shack parties. You're better people than this, but it just had to be played up for the sake of the... Episode. Yeah. This is really too bad. Oh, uh, I love his... Get him! <laughs> that was nice. And McGucket. I've been looking for you everywhere, Dipper. I fixed the laptop. Yes. And apparently also learned the... Figured out the password. Or fixed it in such a way that it no longer required a password. Or he was the one who originally owned the laptop and... Still remembered the password, somehow. All possibilities. Mm-hmm. Because he could have left it behind when he left. Mm-hmm. That, that countdown, and then the, the camera cutting over to that tapestry on the wall of people down on their knees in that huge one-eyed triangle. Yep. Doesn't quite look like Bill as we've seen him in the other episodes, but I can't help feeling that it's Bill. It's probably Bill. Yeah, as so apparently we haven't even seen his final form yet. <laughs> apparently not. So should we wrap things up? We should, because if they stuck around for this long, <laughs> we should make it even longer. Yeah, yeah, just to make YouTube's algorithm go, hey, that video's an hour and a half. I think we had one of those. Um, didn't we split it into two pieces because we talked a really 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 long time about bravely default yeah i think it's one entire episode that's actually an hour and five minutes long it's not an hour and a half but yeah i thought we broke it that was I, splatoon i know we broke splatoon into two pieces i thought uh, maybe we just folk we did two sections because we spent one on gameplay and one on character arcs and theories and then i did a secondary recording because almost as soon as we finished that recording i'm like i can't stop the theorizing i'm recording this without lux and i'm going to give it to him and i think he put it on his tumblr yeah just his audio my, it's, e it's either on my tumblr or on the tumblr i set up for this podcast which is actually still getting traffic to it mainly because i have stuff auto posting to it from our youtube channel yeah, so you guys want to hear other rambling theories and see a ridiculously long video? It's a yeah. nice sketch of Ring a Bell, too, by the way. Mm. Uh, so, what did you think of these episodes? Intense. Intense. Because the first one was calm, and then we had intense, and then intense, and then a little bit calm, and then intense. Mm -hmm. It's really ramping up, and we're only ten episodes in. Mm-hmm. Things are gonna go crazy. Yep, especially since we only have 10 episodes left. Wow. Yeah. And this has been our thoughts about that rascally dreamboat ring a bell. I mean, Gravity Falls, Season 2, Episodes 6 through 10. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please like it, share it, leave a comment, subscribe. You know you want to click subscribe. We've seen the metrics. Most of our viewers are not subscribed. Please subscribe. <laughs> Check out other videos in our lineup. And if you like Lux's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. If you want some of your own, check his Tumblr page for commission availability. <laughs>